Here's a controversial statement. Coach Henderson is the Dylan Baxter of spring recruiting. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Holkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day, part of the Locked On Network. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast, never forget this show is free, and always remember how much I appreciate your support. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today, and you're going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash Locked On to get started. So you heard me at the top of the show, plant that flag. Who remembers Dylan Baxter? I guess that's a good place to start. Well, Dylan Baxter, way back when, I think 2010, roughly right around there, was a can't-miss five-star running back slash athlete um, who came to USC. And the reason I'm making this comparison Earlier today, I was on my weekly panel show Inside the Trojan Huddle with the host, Chris Harledge, and Eric McKinney, while we patiently wait for Greg Katz to get back with us. Uh, We cannot wait. So sooner the better, Greg. Anyways, one of the questions that Chris asked, um, where does Coach Henderson rank so far in the greatest recruiters in USC football history? I took that question literally. I had some fun with it. And I said, he's the Dylan Baxter of recruiting right now. He's a springtime phenom. It was tongue in cheek. Again, I I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I think he's made, I think he's made for this. I think Coach Henderson has found his calling, uh, being a recruiter, a mentor in life, just helping young adults become better uh, people. And if you can help them, you know, achieve their dream and get to the NFL, even better, right? So again, this has zero, absolutely nothing, not a zilch (laughs) to do with his coaching or his his developmental skills. Zero. My only point is, quote, finger quotes, so far, all he's done is wowed us during the spring with his potential. And it's kind of like what Dylan Baxter did back in that spring football game. Remember, everyone said, we've got Reggie 2.0. Dylan Baxter looked like, oh, my God, where did this guy come from? And we're glad he's a Trojan. So, again, for the learning and hearing impaired, you know who you are, I am a Coach Eric Henderson fan. And I think he's going to kill it with recruiting, especially – Uh, If USC can hold on to these guys who are flipping and committing literally less than 24 hours after taking an unofficial visit to USC. That's the type of impact that Eric Henderson has had so far. Look, the question was, again, where does he rank among USC's top recruiting coaches? You can see on the rundown, we're going to have some fun with today's show, so stick around. You're going to love this show today. So now we're going to talk about some of USC's best recruiters, head coaches, and assistants. In the next segment, uh, we're going to talk about some of the defensive playmakers that USC is going to need this season. And then also we're going to talk about Coach Lynn. He went obnoxious. So stick around for a third segment, and I'll explain what obnoxious means to Coach Lynn. So, again, getting back to where Coach Henderson uh, ranks in USC's pantheon of coaches, coaches who are, who are known as great recruiters. Uh, look, again, USC has had some really good ones, head coaches and assistants, uh, and, as well as players. Personally, uh, I think it's too soon to put him in the top 10. But, however, again, you cannot complain about his potential um, just based on these short-term results that we've seen so far in the spring. Again, when you have the ability to get the attention of recruits and help them and not just help them, make them want to play for you, you have something special. 
and I think Eric Henderson has something special. So who are some of the best recruiters that USC has seen? Pete Carroll obviously is going to jump to the front of that list. As far as head coaches and recruiting go, recruiting recruiters go, um, Pete Carroll, he, he, he aced that. I mean, he took it. He took USC recruiting to levels that it hadn't seen in a long, long time. And you can't really compare eras because when John McKay was recruiting as USC's head coach, there wasn't an 85-man limit. He was stacking dudes on the bench that he just didn't want to see across town at UCLA or anywhere else. So he said, here, here's a scholarship. Wait your turn. Ed Orgeron, um, for sure. I, I mean, obviously. <laughs> and on, speaking of Ed Orgeron, by the way, uh, Taylor Mays, I think he went and found some of his old private home films. <laughs> you got to check out uh, social media. It's on my Twitter feed. Uh, Ed Orgeron getting the uh, getting the defensive room jacked, getting the entire locker room for that matter jacked up. Shirts off. <laughs> you got to check it out. Um, and then Alex Holmes, he saw it tied in from that uh, from that team. He chimed in and says, "You know, he said, Mark, we used to do that stuff in the bars too." <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, who's going to tell them about the uh, no shirts, no service policy, right? Anyways. Speaking of great recruiters, Alex Holmes was one of the best player host recruiters uh, that USC has known in my lifetime. Again, I've heard some stories, not specifically about Alex, but about some of the stuff that went on back then and stuff that only stuff that is made of le legendary. That's all I'm going to say. Um, where does Lane Kiffin, where does Steve Sarkeesian land on the top 10 list? Tim Norton Jr., remember, he was a he was a linebacker coach from USC. Was he a good recruiter? I mean, USC had some really great linebackers back in the day, especially during that era. Uh, let's go old school. Marv Goo, Dave Levy. Uh, those guys, defense, offense, they were part of John McKay's coaching tree. So was John Robinson. I think he was better the first time around. Excuse me. What about Dante Williams? Where does he land? Great recruiter. I mean, he was able to bring in some talent. Remember who the head coach was before he became the interim head coach. If you want to talk about recruiting with a handicap, you got to throw Dante in the mix somewhere, right? Great recruiter. He, he's moved on. He's now at Georgia. Yeah, we're talking about recruiting. Nothing else. What about Johnny Manson? He was once called one of USC's best recruiters. Here's what we'll talk. Here's what I'll say about Eric Henderson. If USC ends up with a top five class, Eric Henderson is going to be a big reason why, right? I mean, look what happened this weekend. USC jumped 15 spots nationally. They went from the 18th rated class. They now have the number three rated class, and that's all because of two defensive, three defensive linemen, five. Total commits. All of them are on the defensive side of the ball. One is a 2026 commit, but you understand where I'm going with this. So you had a cornerback in 2026. You had one of the top safeties in 2025, Hilton Drake Stubbs. And then you had three defensive linemen. Isaiah Gibson, Justice Terry, Vest Cordova. Look, like I said, I'm not ready to put him in the top 10 just yet. I'm all about results. The ones that matter when pen meets paper. So if USC finishes near the top, look. Again, this is really kind of tongue in cheek. I'm not knocking Eric Henderson at all. I'm just kind of putting things in perspective. Coach Henderson is going to be a, he's already a very hot commodity. Um, so I, what is Coach Riley going to have to do to keep him around? It's going to be expensive. Here's my suggestion. I say for every five-star that commits with Eric Anderson as the primary recruiter, $100,000 bonus. Four-star, 75 k 
put him on one of those types of uh, commission bases. You know, yeah, put him on commission. Sell. You sell that five star, you get 100K. You sell that four star, you get 75K. He's already well compensated. I don't know the exact figure, but you don't, like I said, you don't pull him from the LA Rams to essentially do the same thing at USC without paying somebody really well. Like I guess it coach Riley, he's gonna have to fight off the wolves. The SEC, they don't like it when USC comes in and, and takes theirs. They get angry. And then when they get angry, the NCA starts calling around USC saying, well, What are you guys doing over there? Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on my uh, Eric Henderson classification again. Tongue in cheek, having a little fun here. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads. Money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and bet college hoops until they cut down the nets. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to its peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guarantee Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right. Who are the defensive playmakers on the roster as we stand right now? I was watching the Trojans Live radio show with uh, your host, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Max Brown. And it was kind of funny. They got the... Uh, they got the Lincoln Riley practice treatment. <clears throat> there are times when um, they go a little bit longer than anticipated. So the show they were they were anticipating having their guests at the beginning of the show. Well, guests were running a little behind, so it turned out that they had to reverse course and do things backwards. It was interesting. It was fun. Um, Max Brown talked about. Uh, he was reflecting back to what uh, Coach Danton Lynn said about his defense and how he likes to be versatile and how he likes to play a lot of guys. And what Max said was, if you can play, you're going to see the field. And the other thing I love about Max is what Max Brown, when he's breaking down things, is he gets really analytical. He said this. He was talking in hindsight, look, how he was remembers looking back at UCLA's defense, looking at their film, and how... Uh, Coach Lynn was able to recognize how much talent he had over there. And when he recognized the talent he had, how he adjusted that talent. Not to fit the system, but to fit the talent itself. So now he's doing the same thing at USC. He's trying to figure out how much talent does he have. The panel also pointed out how the, how the Bruins went from Trojan-level bad on defense in 2022, and literally became a really freaking good defense in just one year. So all things being equal, I ask this question. If USC has the same amount of talent, or more, that the Bruins had last year in 2023, when they were really good on defense, because I think they do. I think USC can match the talent level. Call me a homer. Uh, then hopefully we're going to see a similar ascent with USC's defense this year. My everydayers, 
you know, you've heard me say this, you know, more than once. Coach Lynn likes to have versatile defenses. Max Brown said, Coach Lynn likes to have versatile defenses, versatile types of players. And it starts up front. <laughs> can Eric Gentry, can he be one of those playmakers in, 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 for Coach James and Lynn? Uh, can he be one of those different types of edge players, like a Liatu Latu? They're both tall, long, lean. The difference is Latu had probably about 40 extra pounds <laughs> on Eric Gentry. Uh, Latu, again, much thicker. But again, both have similar body styles, very long, lean, long arms. Uh, can affect things, affect the game differently. Um, look, I love the guys that are committed to USC in 2025 so far but they're not available until 2025. So who in the front seven, in that front four, um, who are the playmakers? Now, I'm keeping in mind that the uh, roster is going to look a lot different at the end of spring as well as, you know, fall camp. The portal is going to take it. It's also going to give it. Keep that in mind. So it's hard to say who will be the playmakers. I mean, right now, based on the roster, I can – Pick out some names. But uh, after one week of spring practice, nothing's even close to being settled. Um, I mean, we have a pretty good idea of who's going to play. But two guys for sure. I, I think these two guys will definitely be playmakers in 2024 because they're familiar with the defense. You've got John Humphrey, a cornerback. And specifically, then I really think Kamari Ramsey at safety. Uh, will he be a team captain? I don't know. But he's going to be able to be the quarterback back there on defense. It's going to be a big-time help. Guy Alexander, definitely playmaker up front. And Jamil Muhammad, can he make another – can he take another bounce? Can he, you know, with that production. Last year, he got really good. And then as the season progressed, you know, some will say, well, his his production tapered off as the as the competition got better. Well, he's bigger and stronger. Maybe that was the difference last year as the season wore on. Uh, I think both Achille Arnold and his brother, Easton Mascarenas Arnold, they'll end up being playmakers. They were all conference last year. They are they they need to come in and contribute, produce right away. Braylon Shelby, he's definitely going to need to take that sophomore bounce. We saw last year, he played a lot as a true freshman. He made some great plays. And then he was asked to do things that maybe a true freshman defensive man rush edge shouldn't be asked to do. Like cover a wheel route against a running back. Yeah. I don't know. Is this finally the year of Anthony Lucas? It wasn't last year. It didn't happen his true freshman year with Texas A&M. We're now going to year three. Fresh start, new defensive coordinator, new scheme. I mentioned Bear Alexander. He's going to be a playmaker. Who is going to be the next playmaker on defense, though? You look at the roster, who, who do you want to name? A cornerback? Is Jacoby Covington? Possibly. We saw the guys in the Holiday Bowl. USC brought in a lot of guys, too. So let me know. Hit me up in the comments section. You're watching on YouTube. By the way, if you are watching on YouTube, it's a perfect time to remind everybody, I love your participation. And you can really continue to help the show grow. If you haven't become a subscriber yet, I don't know why. It's free. Just click that subscribe button. See this? That's called a thumbs up. Smash it. You're the Hulk. And don't forget to hit the bell notification button. That way you will not miss one episode of Locked on USC, part of the Locked on Network, your team every day. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's Push it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. 
these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They now have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. I mentioned that I caught uh, a little bit of the Trojans Live radio show, and I stuck around, waited for Coach DeAnton Lynn. I wanted to hear what he had to say. Loved what he had to say. Um, he has three principles. The DeAnton Lynn three principles. He said, we put an emphasis on these three things. Number one, I want obnoxious communication. <laughs> now you understand where I was going with this. We want guys talking a lot. And he wasn't referring to snack talking. No, no, no. We want guys talking a lot pre-snap, post-snap, whether it's about our call checks, the other team's offense, uh, their backs, tight end locations, splits, stuff like that. He said you can never communicate enough. That's what he means about obnoxious. Just talk. Make sure everybody is on the same page. Uh, the second thing he said they emphasized. We put a big emphasis on effort. And he says, I know everybody does that, but that's something we really emphasize. All 11 guys, every single play. Not every other play, every play. And then third, um, it's attacking the ball. So we want to attack the ball off the quarterback, off the ball carrier. You know, because if we can get the ball back to our offense, they're going to go, they're going to do good things with it. Something else that he said, and I found it funny and hard to believe at the same time, but can you believe that USC's new defensive coordinator? Yeah. He saw some looks last year, the way teams came out, lined up, unbalanced formations. He said that's stuff that he had never seen before. So last year, he was still learning the subtle nuances of and the differences between the, the pro game where he's familiar, and the college game. You know, you talk about the hash marks and how teams line up, things you can and cannot do. And he literally said, he's like, I had no idea he could do this. <laughs> so I, I love hearing how, he said, as the season went on, um, he, he got more comfortable and he would start tweaking things with the defense. And, and he said, by the end of the season, he was literally having a bunch of what if moments. You know, you know, what if we did this? He was like, man, if I knew this then, but we could have done this. His point was basically, he's just he's so much more comfortable heading into his his sophomore season as a college, a defensive coordinator, as a college coach, and look. There's only one way to look at that. It's going to bode well for USC. He's more comfortable in his in his college coaching skin. His philosophy, he said, for getting better this year is going to be simple. One day at a time. The, the panel, you know, also raised another really good point. You know, they said, you know, Coach Lynn, you've worked for Chip Kelly. And you've also now, you're working for Coach Riley. Two offensive savants. Um, and, you know, Coach Lynn said, you know, because of that, uh, it, it's making him a better defensive coordinator because he gets to see all these, you know, different creative new things in practice. And that's helping him game plan better. Another thing I can truly appreciate about um, Coach Lynn's answers, he, he keeps them short. Very concise and to the point. I'm not left asking, what did he mean by that? That, ironically, is great communication. He's not obnoxious. Essentially, less, um, less is more really applies here. He gets his message across, but it's not a big jumbled word salad. He is the antithesis of Graham Harrell or an Alex Grinch. 
A lot of words, more so for Graham Harrell. A lot of words came out, but you're like, and the answer is, Alex Grinch talked a really great game. I just wish it showed up on the field with the players he was trying to teach the story to. So again, um, very good, effective communicator because he doesn't he doesn't throw a whole bunch at you. He just he answers the question. So one of the questions was, you know, do what do you what is your anticipation, your expectation at the end, end of the spring camp? He said he doesn't anticipate that the entire playbook is going to be installed by the end of spring. However, he does think the foundation will have been laid. Uh, he he thinks that you know the, the the core pillars, your main fronts, uh, your main coverages, your main your, your core pressures. He also said something about pressure. He says we you know we want to pressure with four, and we want to we want to do it. We want to pressure not because we have to pressure. And he wanted to make sure he explained the difference between those two things. Um, he doesn't not just know but understand those those things I was talking about the pillars, their fronts, their main coverages. Um, not just know but understand it. So when you know when they add the piles in when when fall camp arrives, they can start piling on more. So understand your pillars your main fronts, your main coverages, your core pressures, the fundamentals, the slow, simple install. So again, he said, just understand it. And then when fall camp rolls around, they can start piling on more and more and it'll make it easier at that point. But he also said, you know, look, we want to find an identity during spring camp. We want to be multiple but it's based on the people. His trans I'm translating what he meant by that, if you didn't see the show. Uh, he's going to use what he has and he's gonna find the best place for them. He's not gonna force them into a system, which I think is what we saw the first two years uh, under Lincoln Riley on the defensive side of the ball. They were trying to take the players, whether they were already here or whether they're players who transferred in. And they tried to get him to fit that system. We saw the results. Uh, something else that Coach Lynn said uh, that I love. This is great. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Well, I'm sure you know that Coach Lynn is a very young coach. Uh, but he actually attended a, a camp at USC when he was in high school. And he said, so he knows all about USC's history. Um, and he mentioned that lately is, you know, USC has kind of been seen as an offensive football team. Lincoln Riley's your head coach. You are definitely going to be seen as an offensive football team. But when you consider all the accolades, the awards that USC has won, the Heismans, uh, best receiver, Marquise Lee, those types of things, those are offensive awards. You know, he said, he, he looked at Max Brown, but you got Sean Cody sitting right. So he said, no offense, but you look at, at all the offensive guys who have come through here. But to me, USC, this is still a defensive school. Those are Coach Lynn's words. Sean Cody was pumping his arms. He was like, yeah, he's so right. <laughs> um, because there have been some really good, really freaking great defenses at USC. I mean, 2008 comes to mind. That might have been the last great defense at USC. That team gave up less than 10 points per game for the season. That's how good they were. So it got me thinking. And that team, was, they were denied a chance to play in the BCS. But again, we're not going to go down that road. But it got me thinking. I was, let's invite those guys out to practice. <laughs> Eric Henderson, he invited Aaron Donald had a nice impact. Well, you know what? Let's find as many of those guys as you could find from that 2018. Have them walk in through Goo Gate, arms crossed, kind of like, remember the uh, Revenge of the Nerds movie, the Landa, Landa, Landa alumni? Had that had mean face on, arms crossed, stood in front, stood in front of the, uh, the stage, made sure the nerds got their chance to say their thing. I mean, have them come in, just 
like this. Stand against the wall, passing judgment. They'll let you know if you're playing good defense. I mean, that linebacker crew alone, Ray Ray, Clay Matthews, Brian Cushing, Kaluka Mayava, uh, Luther Brown, Chris Gallipo. People don't realize, uh, save for the linebacker group, that was a relatively young defense, especially up front. But that linebacker group, the safety groups, Taylor Mays, Kevin Ellison, devastating. I want. I don't know if you could get that type of improvement in one year, but if you can see some remnants of that 2008 defense show up this year, aggressive, attacking, physical, I think USC fans will be happy. I think they'll be happy with the results at the end of the year, too. That's the end of this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did it again. That's what we do here at Locked on USC, five times a week. I'm going to bring you everything you want to know, Trojan, Trojan News. I'm going to be back again with another episode tomorrow. We're going to get some recruiting talk going again. We're going to check in, see how the women's basketball team did. I think they won, but I don't have a score in front of me. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.